Hi there. Today I'm talking about one of my favorite subjects, newborn babies. I'm going to give you some pearls for new moms, new dads, and new grandparents. And maybe you'll want to share them if your neighbors had a new baby or whatever. I have been giving this little lecture for about 30 years now, and it suddenly occurred to me that I could just videotape it and have it shared with lots of other people. So first of all, I'm going to talk about general things about the baby, and then I will go from head to toe um, talking about specific things that um, new parents often complain about or are worried about. So the first thing is hiccups. All babies hiccup. It is not anything that's wrong with the baby. It will eventually go away. You don't need to do anything. You don't need to give the baby water. You don't need to turn the baby upside down. The hiccups bother you a lot more than they bother the baby. And mom probably with reflection will remember that she could feel the baby hiccuping when the baby was inside. So a lot of different cultures have different ideas about how to cure hiccups in the babies, but you don't need to put a piece of thread on the head. You don't need to give the baby water. Definitely never give a newborn baby water and the hiccups will go away. So while I'm on the subject of water, it's really, really, really important. Do not water the babies. Babies are not plants. If you give a newborn baby too much water, you will dilute the blood and then the baby will get water on the brain and this can cause seizures. The amount of blood that a newborn baby has is barely a tablespoon. So you can imagine if you start to give the baby water don't give the baby water until at least two to three months of age. Breast milk is over 80% water. If you give the baby formula, you know yourself that you're putting a ton of water in there. So there's absolutely no need to give a baby free water. Jaundice. Jaundice is a very common phenomenon in newborns. And this is because the liver is immature. Most cases of jaundice, 99.9%, .9 do not need to be treated. You will know that your baby is jaundiced because the urine is very bright yellow, the eyes may be a little yellow, and if you press on the skin like this, you will notice that it leaves a yellow mark. So, there are a variety of um, reasons why babies are jaundiced in addition to the immaturity of the liver. One of them is it's more common in breastfed babies. There may be incompatibility between the parents and on and on and on. But all you need to worry about is number one, what is the level of the jaundice when the baby leaves the hospital and to follow up with your pediatrician shortly thereafter. Once the level of jaundice starts to go down, it does not go back up. It doesn't go up and down and up and down. It only goes in one direction. So there were doctors that I were familiar with in the old days who would say, oh, you need to keep checking the bilirubin every day. That is not necessary. Once you have two bilirubins, the second one being lower than the first, you're good to go. If you want to move the jaundice along, you can put your baby in the window yes, in the window, because sun rays help to reduce the jaundice. So you can put a little cover over the baby's eyes. You can make the room nice and warm, put them on a blanket, put them in the window, and the sun rays will help to reduce the jaundice. But as the baby starts to urinate and get more flushed with fluids, the jaundice will go down. So, Everybody wants their baby to smell like Johnson & Johnson. And I know that it's the classic baby smell, but I encourage my parents not to use any creams or perfumes or anything that has a smell to it before the baby is one month of age. And even then, there's no rush. Why? Because you're more likely to cause um, allergies later on in life the earlier you expose your baby to perfume. Vaseline is a wonderful thing. You can rub it on the baby if you think the baby's uh, skin is dry. And particularly to prevent 
a diaper rash. You don't need to use diapoline and all kinds of other stuff. Just wipe the baby's bottom when you change the diaper and rub a whole bunch of Vaseline on it. If the baby has been circumcised, you stick your finger in the Vaseline and you put it around the tip of the penis when you change them. There is absolutely no reason to put gauze on a baby's penis after circumcision. If you can imagine how painful it would be to keep pulling that gauze off after it gets stuck on the penis. And while we're talking about circumcision, there is absolutely no medical reason to do a circumcision on a baby, but that's a whole different topic. Um, once the umbilical cord, the belly button falls off, you can start to wash the baby in a tub. And feel free to wash the baby's hair. Do not be afraid to put mild shampoo in the baby's head and wash it, or you can use a washcloth. Now, there is something called cradle cap, which actually tends to get worse up until the second month sometimes. But if you wash the baby's hair regularly, that will reduce the amount of cradle cap that the baby has. And cradle cap comes from having too much oil on the scalp. And it does look like dandruff. So some people think they wanna put oil on the baby's hair to get the dandruff gone. That's not a good idea. So let's start looking at the baby from head to toe. We talked about the seborrhea on the head, which is the cradle cap. Um, the shape of the baby's head when it's born is all lopsided. That's fine. The baby had to come through a canal and just as you were going through labor, the baby was also going through labor. So the little head gets a little distorted, but over time, any abnormalities that look flat this way, that way, is gonna be fine. Mom should take probiotics because thrush, the white um, covering of the tongue is very common um, with newborns. And the thrush is due to uh, yeast. So if mom takes probiotics, there's less likelihood for that. If it gets to be a problem, you can see a thick white layer on the tongue, then you just need to talk to your physician and they can give you something that will take care of that. When you left the hospital, you got the blue bulb do not stick the blue bulb up in the baby's nose. It's way bigger than the baby's nose. That is just there in case the baby herbs up and you need to put it and draw stuff out of the mouth. But let's talk about snuffles. Baby snuffles is what I call it. <laughs> Moms worry about the snuffles a lot in the first week. Now, the size of the nose is so small that all it takes is a tiny bit of mucus to get jammed up in there and the baby goes <laughs> and that's normal and the only way it can be cleared is for the baby to sneeze so now you have a baby making noises in the nose and sneezing and mom thinks oh the baby's got a cold no the baby's clearing the snuffles and there's nothing you can do to get that mucus out the baby has to get it out themselves now if you use a little bit of saline spray and then use that bulb we talked about and you could kind of sometimes you can actually get the mucus out without sticking the bulb up in the nose. You can also take a wet q-tip and just tuck it at the corner there and sometimes if you twist it it'll bring the whole mucus out. But fear not. It does not mean that the baby's in distress or the baby's not going to be able to breathe. You can tell when your baby has respiratory distress because you can see the ribs going in. If you can see your baby's ribs when he's breathing there's a problem. And also if a baby has pneumonia, which of course your newborn baby doesn't, but you will see the, the nostrils going flaring as we call it. So let's go down to the chest. Sometimes newborn babies have breasts. And if the newborn baby is a male, parents get really worried about why their little male baby has breasts. Male and female babies have breasts because it still has the mom's hormones. Within a couple of weeks, it'll be gone. But if you feel it, you'll feel little nodules there. That's completely normal. The abdomen. The baby's belly is rounder than yours, as you probably noticed, and that's normal. No baby has a flat belly. If the, ba if the belly feels soft, there's nothing wrong with it. The stomach should not feel hard. 
A lot of parents think that their baby is constipated because when they want to poop, they do a lot of moving and it's normally fine. Let the baby poop on its own. When you leave the hospital, the baby poops after every meal and it's usually yellow and seedy. But as the days go on, you will notice that the, the, the stools um, take longer to come out. And sometimes the baby may go the whole day without pooping. If the baby's not crying and the stomach is soft, the baby is fine. Um, we talked about the umbilical cord falling off, but before it falls off, all you can do is just wipe with witch hazel, or if you prefer to use alcohol for whatever reason, and wipe around the umbilicus. Do not try to open up. Do not think that you can see a little bit of mucus. Do not smell it because it's a piece of dead meat and dead meat smells. So you put your nose there, it's going to smell like a piece of dead meat. And then you're going to think, oh, it's infected. It's not. The umbilicus naturally takes care of itself. It falls off. After it falls off, do not try to open it up to clean it. You only clean what you can see. So the baby's hips get checked every time they come into the hospital, into the office, and that's simply to see if there's a click in the hips. And we check the hips all the way through until they're one and a half, because we want to make sure that when the baby's walking, they're not walking on dislocated hips, which may not be obvious just looking at it. Let's talk about the genital area. Uh, I told you about the circumcision. I told you how to prevent the diaper rash. You don't have to put any fancy stuff. And sometimes female babies actually have a little bit of blood shortly after delivery. There used to be an old joke that it's their first period, but don't worry about it. It's once again related to mom's hormones. The fingernails. The fingernails do not need those fancy nail clippers that you got at your um, baby party. You j the, na the nails are so soft, you can just pick them and pull it yourself and you will not damage the baby's fingers. If you try to use the baby nail clippers, you're more likely to cause injury. And then there's the feeding schedule. When a baby is brand new, let them feed on demand. Do not try to put the baby on a schedule. There will be time for that in the next few weeks. But initially, let the baby feed on demand most babies are trying to catch up to the weight that they should be. When a baby leaves the hospital, oftentimes they've lost at least seven ounces, um, up to seven ounces from their birth weight. And that's normal because that's a lot of water that, that they lose as well. So I hope this has been helpful. And if you would like more videos on taking care of babies or even older children, then please let me know that you liked this. Click the like button and give me whatever comments you'd like to. So congratulations on being a new parent. I love babies. I know it's an exciting time and it's just awesome. So talk to you later. Bye.